We've seen how our body gets the energy and the building materials that our bodies need from the food that we eat. But exactly how much food do we need? To understand this, we have to carefully calculate how much energy is contained in food. One way of measuring this is with a bomb calorimeter. The energy in food is counted in kilocalories. Common usage has shortened kilocalories to calorie. One calorie corresponds to the amount of food that when burned will raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. The average grown man needs approximately 2,500 kilocalories a day and women about 2,000. A lot of the calories we consume are needed just to keep us alive before we do any work. This is called our basal metabolic rate and we use between 800 and 1400 calories to keep our brain, heart and all our other organs ticking over. A balanced diet that supplies the correct amount of calories and nutrients is fundamental for a healthy body and a healthy life. Our nutritional needs depend directly on the amount of work our bodies do. A sports person needs many more calories than someone who spends all day in an office or classroom getting very little exercise. If you consume more food than your body actually uses for energy, it is stored as fat. Our bodies have evolved to store excess energy supplies in fat, in case we need it for the future when there is a food shortage. The trouble is that for most of us in the developed world, we usually have plenty of food and don't need to rely on stored fat. In the last two decades, sedentary lifestyles and unhealthy diets has led to the problem of many overweight adults and children worldwide. Being overweight is a major contributor to serious diseases such as high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. If we eat more than our bodies need, our diet is said to be unbalanced. In space, an astronaut's food intake has to be the ultimate balanced diet. They have to give top performances every day in the most hostile environment in which human beings can survive. So their food has to be both nutritionally balanced and tasty, but weigh as little as possible. A wrong estimate of their nutritional needs may be harmful to their health. It can lead to tiredness, muscular atrophy and cardiovascular problems. So the astronaut's diet is carefully monitored whilst in space by flight surgeons like Dr. Filippo Ongaro. The nutritional intake is monitored in the sense that we know what has been brought on board for that astronaut. So we're able to know in terms of nutrients and in terms of calories what the astronaut is going to eat. And that choice has been made on the basis of the needs that the astronaut has uh, that has been calculated on Earth, including of course the physical exercise. Uh, on the space station the astronaut is exercising a couple of hours per day, so there's a lot of calories that are burned just by physical exercise. Extensive research has shown that astronauts actually use slightly fewer calories when in space. But it's not just calorie intake that needs to be monitored in space. ESA nutritionists have discovered some important differences between a balanced diet on Earth and a balanced diet for an astronaut in space. The iron intake in space should be lower than on Earth because in space the astronaut has a lowered plasma volume and a lowered erythrocyte volume. So at the beginning of space flight, there's a breakdown of the hemoglobin, which contains the iron. So more iron is available. So the, that's one of the exceptions. The iron content of the astronaut's diet should be lower than the diet on Earth. Vitamin D is also very important for healthy bones. Our bodies usually make vitamin D when our skin is exposed to sunlight. Spacecraft are shielded to protect the astronauts from harmful radiation and excess sunlight. Astronauts in space on the, in the ISS don't have that much sunlight, so they, don't have, they can't synthesize vitamin D. So what we right now add is about 800 international units of vitamin D with the space food. But it's not just about what we eat. When we eat can also drastically improve our performance. This is where astronauts can learn from the field of sports science. Well, there are many parallels in what the physician is doing together with the astronaut. It's, it's very similar to what a, a coach or a medical doctor does together with the athlete. So it's really improving, optimizing his level of health from a mental and a physical perspective. 
Here at Helium Thames, some of the world's top rowers train to achieve their optimum physical and mental performance. Olympic rower Tony Garbutt knows all about getting the optimum performance out of his body. How important is a balanced diet for an athlete like you to, to keep fit during training? Uh, well, I find it really important to make sure you eat correctly. The big thing we we'll talk about, I guess, is carbohydrates, because without um, the glycogen stores, which, are, which is what's stored in the muscle, that is absolutely key, and if you get that wrong, um, you're going to be in trouble. What I advise people, really, is to try and look at what they call complex carbohydrates, which is bran, porridge, oats, wholemeal bread. It gives you the energy for a little bit longer, so you don't have the dips in energy uh, that's the dips in performance. When we go into more slightly weight-based training, I always try and think about having more protein as well. Um, so I combine the two together and they've done some recent study to show that actually taking on protein and carbohydrate after hard strenuous exercise within a 20 minute window um, helps recuperate the body. But it's effectively quite a natural balanced diet really. It's quite simple stuff, but just making sure that you're having it evenly spaced out throughout the day in, in regular intervals. So we've heard how food can be used to optimize an individual's physical performance. But there's a lot more to food than simply its effect on the body.